God bless you. It is so good to be with you on another Agape Time video. I tell you, God is good and worthy to be praised. I'm so glad that you're still here in the land of the living one more time, and I'm so glad that I'm still here. Amen. Amen. Praise be unto God. Um, we're going to talk about on this particular video, the topic is um, God said it, um, I believe it, and that settles it. Yes, yes, yes. That's what we're going to talk about. God said it, I believe it, and that settles it. Um, we just thank and praise the Lord for being so merciful, so good, and so kind. Um, we have our with us our guest, um, Pastor Sean Thompson. Um, and I know and I'm believing uh, the Lord that God is going to use him to give us a word on this video about God said it, I believe it, and that settles it. God bless you, Pastor Thompson. How are you doing this evening? God bless you, fine, marvelous in the Lord. Praise God. Praise God. We give God praise. We give God glory for this opportunity to come before you at Agape Ministries. And we thank God for Pastor Virus and, and her ministry and what she is doing. And as she said that we are talking about, God said it, God, I believe it, and that settles it. And my opening scripture will be coming from Psalms 119.89, where it says, Forever, O Lord, thy word is settled in heaven. Permanently, the word of God is settled in heaven. That means the word is settled for us here on earth too. God said it, all we have to do is believe it and that will settle it. So we can use the promises in the word to receive anything and everything he said that he promised he would give on to us. It is in John 14, 26, where it says, but the comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, whom the Father will send in my name, he shall teach you all things and bring all things to your remembrance whatsoever I have said unto you. Now the Holy Spirit works around the clock, trying to get us to settle the word of God in our minds and in our spirit so we can do the work of God and what he needs us to do for his kingdom. It isn't enough to have faith of God. We must learn how to use it. It is through the Holy Spirit who comes to help us, teach us, and guide us in using the things that God has made possible for us to have right here on earth. See, we need to realize and understand that if he said it, I believe it, and it is settled. Knowing the fact that God is not man, that he shall not lie. We must realize and understand that everything he says shall come to pass. For even in Philippians 4 19, he says, but my God shall supply all your needs according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. Even in Proverbs 3, 5 through 6, it says, trust in the Lord with all thy heart, lean not unto thy own understanding, in all thy ways acknowledge him, and he shall direct thy path. And even in Jeremiah 32, 27, it says, Behold, I am the Lord thy God of all flesh. Is there anything too hard for me? If God said it, I believe it, and that shall settle it. I know the fact that when he said it, it will come to pass. That when you read scripture from the Old Testament to the New Testament, from Genesis to Revelations, everything he spoke, everything he said, either came to pass, either happened, or he came forth and came through. See, our God is an awesome, mighty God that can do all things except fail. To all his people that he calls his own, he looks onto us, he comforts us, he keeps us, he protects us, he guides us, he directs us, he allows us to know the fact that he is with us always, never to leave us nor forsake us. See, God says, I will supply your needs, not necessarily your wants, for he would not ask you to walk in the past. And then when you do the things he asked you to do, neglect you on the supply of the needs that he said he would give on to you. Now he makes the plain path for you to walk on, paths on which he serves you through his grace and power the path he leads you, that those are holiness, righteousness, paths are full of fruits of goodness and mercy. See, his bounty of supply is provided all along those paths. So God said it, I believe it, and that settles it. God's word must permeate in your life, your spirit. Act out on faith. Faith will do you no more good than the faith you act out on. 
You may say you have a lot of faith, but just the saying doesn't settle a thing. Faith without works is dead. Now, it's the time right here and right now to believe that if he said it, I believe it, and that settles it. We can't just call ourselves Christians and call ourselves saints and not believe that God's working it out for us. We can't walk around with our heads held high, trusting and believing that we are mighty and above what he called us to be, but we must trust and believe by faith that everything he said within our lives shall come to pass. For even like we said, if he said it, we must believe it. We can't walk by faith and not have that same sight, knowing the fact that even if I do not see it, how can I believe it? Even know the fact that the promises are sure and true, we must know the fact that our God is an on-time God. For even the word lets me know the fact that for we walk by faith and not by sight. We must realize and understand it, that by faith that we can do great and mighty things. If the faith of the mustard seed that moves the mountains, that allows us to be strong in times that we are weak, allows us to go forth as true men and women of God, that when we are called upon, we can act and stand forth on solid ground. Though things may be sinking around us, we know we can hold fast to that bloodstained banner, knowing the fact that our God said it, I believe it, and it shall be settled. Knowing the fact that when I walk with God, he takes me by the hand, he leads me by the way. He allows me to know that I am his own, that I am a child of the most high God, that he is my king, that he is my father, that he is my everything. But again, as we say unto you, if God said it, I believe it, and that settles it. For 1 Peter 1, 7 through 8 says, The trials of your faith be a much more precious than gold that perish, though it be tried with fire, might be found unto praise and honor and glory at the appearing of Jesus Christ, whom having not seen ye love, and whom though now ye see him not, yet believe him, ye rejoice with joy unspeakable and full of glory. It is that pure faith that speaks to us in Matthew 19, 26. With men, this is impossible, but with God, all things are possible. And even in John 15, 17 says, If ye abide in me, and my word abides in you, you shall ask what ye will, and it shall be done on you. So we must realize and understand that with God, we can do all things except fail. See, we must have that faith that resurrects from the inside out, that knowing the fact that when God calls us by our name, he has given us an appointed time an important place within our lives that within this ministry, as we walk upon this world, within this life, we have been chosen as royal priesthood to carry forth his gospel, to accomplish what he has called us to do, and that's to reach others, to show them that salvation is so freely given unto them that they too may be saved, that they too must believe that if he says it, we must believe it that it shall be settled. See, we can't walk around with doubt, not thinking the fact that it will come to pass, though we may not see it, though we may not feel it, though we may not have it happen within our lives, but we must look beyond our circumstances, look beyond the situation, look beyond this world that was happening around us and know the fact that his promises are sure and true. We must know the fact that within God, we can do all things except fail. So I say unto you, why should anyone doubt God? We talk about what he has been created. He created the moon, the stars, the earth, man and animals. He created all things around us, the air that we breathe, the water that we drink. So why not believe? If he said it, we must believe it and that it is settled. Everything God has done from the beginning to the end for a purpose and for a reason. Though we may not comprehend or even understand God's plan, we know he is an on-time God. And when he shows up, he does show out. He comes forth. He lifts his people up. He guides us and directs us. He allows us to know that the promise are sure and true unto his people. So again, I say unto you, if he said it, I must believe it. And when I believe it, I know it is settled because I know that God is not man that he shall not lie that when he walked beside me, he called me his own. He allowed me to come forth out of the miry clay. He brought me forth out of the things that I was going through, the times when I was in the streets, the time when I was on drugs and alcohol. He gave me a word and spoke that it would be well, that you shall live and not die. Everything that you are going through is just temporal because I said it and it will come to pass. All I must do is believe. And he said it will be settled. All I must do is have that faith and trust 
trust that God is in control. If I can look beyond my circumstances, look beyond what's happening within this world, trust and believe and look to the hill from which cometh my help, I will realize and understand my help cometh from the Lord, for he is true, he is mighty, and he is awesome. So we must go to the word of God and reason with him. His reason with the word is to know the fact that not through people's opinions and not what people may think, but know the fact that his word is true, his word is sure. It was good for then, and it is good for now, and it is good for everlasting to time still to come. We must realize and understand that in all God things does within our lives, we shall always hold fast to the promises that when he said it, we must believe it, and it will be settled. So if God said it, just believe it, and that settles it. Because if you look any other direction, if you lean onto your own understanding, believe me when I say, you shall fail. But when you trust in God, when you believe in God, and you know that he is everything within your life, that when he speaks it, you will believe it. And when you believe it, you will know that it is settled. There will be no other way. There shall be no other way. For the most high God that we serve is a loving, righteous, awesome God. For he is our father. He is our everlasting. He is king of kings. He is Lord of lords. He is the prince of peace. He is our everlasting father. He is what he says he is. He says that I am that I am. And that's all we must know. And that's all we must believe. That when he said it, we shall believe it. And it will be settled. For we thank God because within him, we can do all things. With him, all things are possible. With him, we will stand on solid ground and we will stand hand in hand, side by side, and proclaim his truth and his righteousness, that it is sure, that it is right, that it is our life, that it is our everything. We must look unto him and know that he is God. So when he said to you, I said it, God said it, not me, not anyone else. Just know that when you read your word, know that God said it. Though the scripture was written by man, by inspiration through God, we must realize and understand that God said it. We must believe it. It is sure. It is so. It is the truth. And within that, as he said it, I shall believe it. And it is settled. And we give God the praise and we give God the glory for he is truly worthy of all praises. For we know that fact that in him, we can do all things except fail. And we know as long as we grab a hold of his garment and say, Lord, lead the way that we shall follow, it will be settled and it shall be done. And we give him all the glory and we give him all the praise. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. 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 I know amen. you were blessed by that word and amen. don't go away because yours truly is going to give you what God has given her. And then after that, amen, we're going to offer a salvation invitation, a prayer of repentance. Amen. Praise the Lord. Um, we'll be back in a few minutes. But one thing I do know is that I came tonight because I need you. And you need me. Because we're all a part of God's army. And how many know this tonight? I believe this, that it is the will of God that every need that you have, it be supplied. Oh, how many of y'all feel that? Turn around and touch three people around you. Don't be scared. Because they may be looking like they don't want to have church, but they playing. Tell them I need you. I need you. You need me. Don't be acting funny. Cause I may be your next miracle. Your breakthrough may be in me. You might be sitting next to your divine connection. Don't act like you don't wanna talk to me now. Woo! Dr. Pan. Oh, somebody just lift your hands up. Just lift your hands up. Ah, God from Zion. Jesus. He never fails. He's a love that'll never let you go. My God. Woo, how many?
many just feel his love in this place tonight? Thank you, Jesus. You need me. We're all a part of God's body. Stand with me. Can I get somebody to agree with me? We're all a part of God's body. It is His will. Not some of your needs. Every last one of them. And they're going to be. Oh, you important to the Lord. to me tonight without you I wouldn't have a ministry you're the reason why I came my God thank you Jesus I need you you need me we're all apart my God stand with me We're all a part of God's army. I know that it is a way that every last one of your needs be supplied. You've been it to me, and I need you to survive. Can I tell you one more time? Can I tell you one more time? Oh my God. Father, minister this to us tonight. I need you to survive. I won't harm you.
Thank you, Jesus. I pray for you. You pray for me. I need you to survive. This is what I know. It is His will that every need that you have tonight that it be supplied. You're imparting to Him, and He needs you to, and He needs you to survive. Woo! Somebody ought to praise Him right there. Somebody ought to praise Him right there. Somebody ought to praise Him right there. the Lord. I know you were blessed um, by the word of the Lord that came through uh, Pastor Sean Thompson. Um, our topic on today is um, God said it, um, I believe it, and that settles it. Um, God said it, um, I believe it, and that settles it. Um, but there's something that I want to give you some clarity on. Um, when we look in the book of Isaiah 55, um, the the Lord lets us know that his word will not return unto him void. Um, so whether or not you believe it, um, God's word is going to be accomplished um, in the earth. Um, I want you to come and go with me um, to Isaiah, the 45th chapter. Um, I hope you got your Bibles. Um, and we're going to start off at that first verse. Um, if there was ever a time where we needed the word of the Lord. Um, it truly is now. Um, and starting off reading um, in that first verse, um, it says, um, thus saith the Lord um, to his anointed, um, to Cyrus, um, whose right hand I have holden, um, to subdue nations before him, um, and I will loose the loins of kings um, to open before him the two leave gates, um, and the gates um, shall not be shut. Um, now let's just take a moment um, and bisect and dissect the word of the Lord. Um, the word is saying, uh, amen, glory be to God. Um, if God said it, I believe it, and that settles it. Um, now it starts off saying um, in Isaiah 45 and 1, um, thus saith the Lord. Um, you see, when the Lord speaks, um, his creation is to listen. Um, hallelujah. But sometimes um, we get selective hearing. Um, and when you're really listening, uh, honey, let me tell you, you can recognize um, and identify 
testify um, when God speaks. Um, and then number two, um, you have to accept um, or receive um, what the Lord says. Um, and then number three, um, you've got to respond to it. Um, in James, um, it lets us know that we're not to be just a hearer, um, but also a doer. Um, so we need to do um, the word of the Lord. Um, in Ephesians 3 and 20, um, it says, now unto him um, that is able to do it, see abundantly um, above all that we ask or think um, according to the power um, that worketh um, in us. Um, you and I, um, we are uh, who God says we are. Oh, um, hallelujah. And then it goes on to say um, to his anointed, um, to Cyrus. Um, and now let me take a minute here. Um, now, this is a prophecy um, that Isaiah spoke um, more than 150 years um, before it came to pass. Um, this blows my mind. Um, and then when we look and read up on Cyrus, uh, King Cyrus, um, come to find out. Um, he was a Persian king. Um, see, whatever God wants to do through you, um, he's going to do it. Um, he says his anointed. Um, now let's look at the word anointed. Um, it's not just uh, jump, shout, quake, and shake, and dance before the Lord. Um, it's you and I having the ability um, to do um, what God has set us aside to do. Um, so um, he consecrates us um, for a task or an assignment. Um, and then number two, um, he enables us um, to do uh, and have um, the provision um, to perform um, this assignment. Um, now you might say, um, what was Cyrus' assignment? Um, his assignment um, was to release the Israelites um, who had been exiled from Israel and Jerusalem uh, so they could come back um, and rebuild the temple um, in the Babylonian um, empire. Um, and then we find out also um, when you're anointed, um, God sustains you um, to complete the task. Um, he maintains you in it. Um, it tells us in 2 Corinthians um, 1, 21, um, now he which established Establishes us um, with you in Christ um, and has anointed us um, is God. It's God. It's God. Um, the verse continues on, um, and we're talking about Isaiah 45 1, um, whose right hand um, I have holden. Um, you see, many a times um, we may have a position um, but don't have the power. Um, when we read in Acts 19, um, it tells tells us, um, oh, praise God, that God was performing uh, special miracles um, through Paul. Um, people were being healed. Um, people were being delivered from demonic spirits. Um, but you had this vagabond um, exorcist um, who was trying to go around um, delivering folks um, from demonic spirits. Um, and he would say, um, we adjure you um, by Jesus. Jesus, whom Paul preaches. Um, he didn't have the power um, that Paul had. Um, and then what happened was, um, and we're still in Acts 19, um, one day um, the seven sons um, of Sceva, a high priest, um, came along um, and was speaking to the spirit um, that was in this man who was possessed. Um, and the spirit came out um, and said, uh, he didn't come out he spoke to them um, and he said this in verse 15, um, Jesus I know um, and Paul I know, huh, but who are you? Um, in other words, um, he was letting he, 
him them know uh, you don't have the power huh, to make me leave this man. Huh? So what happened? Huh? He jumped on him, huh? gave him a beat down, um, and they left out of there wounded. Huh? Hallelujah and naked. Huh? They didn't have the power. Huh? They didn't have the power. Huh? And then huh, this verse goes on to say um, to subdue nations before him. Um, in Second Chronicles, um, the 20th chapter, um, we find King Jehoshaphat um, was praying um, because he heard um, that the Moabites um, and the Ammites uh, and others were coming to battle against him. Um, and it was a great multitude. Um, but he began to pray um, and consult the Lord as to what to do. Um, and remember, he had over a million soldiers, um, but he wanted to know what God had to say um, about the situation. Um, so as they were there um, in the temple, um, hallelujah, the spirit fell um, on one of the Levites um, and said um, in verse 15, um, thus saith the Lord unto you, um, be not afraid, um, nor dismayed um, by reason of this great multitude, um, for the battle is not yours, um, but God's, but God's, um, come to him, uh, go to him, um, and he'll fight your battle for you. Um, and then it goes on to say, uh, to loose the loins of kings. Um, loins means authority. Um, King Nebuchadnezzar, huh, because he created this image um, and wanted everybody to bow down to this image. Um, honey, huh, but the three Hebrew boys wouldn't do it. Huh? Hallelujah, that he named Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Um, this is in the book of Daniel, the third chapter. Um, and um, he threw him in the fiery furnace. Um, but honey, um, as the story goes, um, when he called them out, um, they were not burnt. Um, they did not smell like smoke. Um, he was amazed. Um, see, God took his authority away. Um, and then he decrees um, that all of the people, huh, hallelujah, should not speak against um, the God huh, of Shadrach, Meshach, Jack and Abednego. Um, as we continue on, we're still in the first verse. Um, hopefully we have time to complete. Um, it says um, to open before him um, the two leaf gates um, and the gates shall not be shut um, in Isaiah huh, 26, um, two through three. Um, it reads, um, open ye the gates um, that the righteous nation um, which keepeth the truth um, may enter in. Um, thou will keep him um, in perfect peace um, whose mind um, is stayed on thee uh, because he trusts in thee. Um, beloved, he'll open up doors um, that men have closed against you or the devil has closed um, and it will not be shut. Um, when we go into verse 2, um, it reads, um, I will go before thee um, and make the crooked path straight. Um, when we look um, in Isaiah 42, 16, um, it says, and I will bring the blind. Sometimes we are blind to the things of God um, by a way that they know not. Um, I will make darkness light before them um, and crooked places straight. Um, the reason why we need um, to have um, our path straight. Um, hallelujah, because the shortest distance um, between two points um, is a straight line. Um, God wants us to stay on the straight um, and narrow way. Um, and then it reads, um, I will break in pieces um, the gates of brass um, and cut in sunder um, the bars of iron. Um, when you hear the word brass, um, it usually means judgment. Um, and when you hear the word iron, um, it usually means stronghold. Um, but it says in 2 Corinthians, um, the 10th chapter um, and the 4th verse, um, for the weapons of our warfare um, are not carnal, um, but mighty through God um, to the pulling down um, of strongholds. Um, he won't let anything interfere um, with the plan that he has for you. Um, and then the third 
And last verse says, and I will give thee the treasures of darkness and hidden riches of secret places that thou may know that I, the Lord, call thee by thy name and the God of Israel. The Lord is our Jehovah Jireh, our provider. Oh, glory be unto God and our supplier. For it tells us in Philippians 4.19, but God shall supply all our need according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. I don't know who you are, but if you don't know Jesus as your Lord and personal Savior, let him come into your life. We're going to, if you want to repeat this sinner's prayer and invite him in, the words are going to come up on the screen. Read them along with me. And it says, Lord, I ask you to forgive me of my sins. And I, and I believe that Jesus Christ died on the cross for my sins. I ask you to come into my life and be my Lord and Savior. Thank you, Lord, for hearing my prayer and saving me in Jesus' name. Amen, amen, and amen. We're getting ready to close out this video, but I want you to be encouraged. Contact information is going to come up on the screen. If you want us to pray for you, send you some information on salvation. It's going to be listed on there. There'll be other information that we want to provide to you. We want to let you know that 6 a.m. prayer. Um, hallelujah will be on Friday, um, September 8th and 22nd um, and 9 a.m. Bible study um, Saturday um, September 16th and 30th um, and I want you to remember um, no matter what you're going through um, that the worst is over ha, and the best is yet to come ha. God bless you ha. let the Lord have his way in your life ha. we love you uh, take care um, and be blessed.